as I said in the last segment, um, when I have a radical expression and I write it with the quotient rule as the quotient of two radicals, us math folks don't like to have radicals in our basement. So to get rid of the radical in the basement in the denominator, we typically will just say, let's just multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same value that is equivalent to multiplying by 1. And I chose to use the square root of 7 as my same value because in this denominator, I know that the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is 7. Remember, it's square root of 49 and the square root of 49 is 7. So I can um, multiply by, wish I had a different color here, I'm multiplying by the number 1 right here, that's what that is, that's the number 1, and in the numerator, the square root of 2 times the square root of 7, product rule says that's the square root of 14, and in the denominator, the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is 7. And I've rationalized the denominator. There's no radical in my basement now. All done. If the number in the, de in the denominator is not a prime number, it becomes a little bit more challenging, but not a lot. Um, but let's do one more. So the square root of 3 over the square root of 5, and I would multiply by 1 in the form of the square root of 5, top and bottom. Upstairs, that would become the square root of 15. But downstairs, the square root of something times the square root of something is that very same something, is what I often say. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. Now, when I go and put an 8 in this denominator, so no longer a prime number, something like this, your options are twofold. One is to think of a number that you can multiply 8 by to get a number in that list right there. That's option number one. In this case, if I could just multiply 8 by 2, it would become a 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So that's one approach. And so upstairs, I would have the square root of 6. And downstairs here, I would have the square root of 16, which is 4. And I'm all done. Another approach to this problem, I'm going to do it right here, is to think of the square root of 8 in terms of its primes. So that is 2 times 2 times 2. And so, because there's a pair, but that a factor is lonely, I would have to give it a partner, so I'd have to give it a square root of 2 to create another pairing here. Um, so that this would be equal to 2, that would be equal to 2, which is the denominator of 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And upstairs, square root of 3 times square root of 2 is the square root of 6. So I'll, I'll probably take both approaches here and attempt to help you understand them. Um, uh, you Probably my second approach will be the way I'll go. You'll have to decide which way you'd like. So the square root of 7 over the square root of 12, I'm rationalizing the denominator. So I'm going to think of 12 as 2 times 2 times 3. And so it has a pairing, but the 3 is all alone, so it needs a buddy. It needs another 3 with it. And so I'm going to multiply this expression, both the top and the bottom, by the square root of 3. So that this square root of 3 and that square root of 3 give me 3. Upstairs, I will have the square root of 21 by the product rule for radicals. You can just multiply 7 times 3 and get that 21. And downstairs, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. And therefore, I have a 6 in the denominator. And I don't have a radical in my basement anymore. It's what's called rationalizing the denominator. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at one more. Um, so let's go with the square root of 7x cubed over the square root of 12x. I just would like to caution you that you've got to use the quotient rules, you've got to do this division, simplify all that before you go too far in these problems. There is no need to bother with this when there's an x cubed up here and you can simplify it first. So just look at this like this. 
Let's look at it as under a single radical, and notice that you can subtract their exponents. So x to the third and x to the first gives you x to the second upstairs. And that allows you to just have to deal with the square root of 12 downstairs now. I could have dealt with that just fine. I could have multiplied top and bottom by the square root of x. But I was able to reduce it first, and that's your better bet. Um, the square root of 12, let's keep the numerator, the square root of 12 is um, 2 times 2 times 3. And so I need to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. Or, you know, I could have looked at that right there and I could have said to myself, geez, if I would just multiply this whole expression by the square root of 3, top and bottom, that would become the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. So is this 2 times that 3 equal to 6. So finally, in the numerator, uh, boy, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to, or I don't want to erase that. I'm try to take it right down here. So I have the square root of 21x squared in the numerator and a 6 in the denominator. And then finally, that right there has to come out from underneath the radical. The square root of x squared is x. And then I can't do anything with the 21. And the 6 is in the denominator. No more radical downstairs. I've simplified the whole expression. We'll go on to adding and subtracting radical expressions next maybe one of the easier, and add a little bit more multiplication in the form of binomials. We'll be foiling those, multiplying the first terms, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last terms.